Greetings everyone and welcome back to the channel for another 1-6 scale figure unboxing and review. And today we're going to be taking a look at the DJ Custom Revenge Hunter, also known as uh, Leonardo DiCaprio from the 2015 Alejandro Iñárritu film, um, The Revenant. Uh, Revenant itself based on a true story actually, uh, set about eight, in the early 1820s, uh, a, a tale of survival and revenge. Uh, in some very very harsh wilderness indeed, but yeah, this is a new one on me DJ customs are completely new to me never had one of their figures before um, So uh, this is unknown territory for me as it was for mr. DiCaprio in the film um, Before we jump in uh, and we'll be taking the usual format t uh, Taking a look at the box diving down onto the table having a look at all the accessories over into the detail uh, to see how he displays under the detail lights. But before we do that, I'd just like to say a huge thank you to Mr. William Wang for providing me with this figure. Uh, as always, uh, a gentleman and a consummate professional. Uh, a link to his uh, Facebook page will be down in the description below. So if you're after anything 1-6 scale or anything statue related for that matter, drop him a line and I'm sure he'll be able to uh, help you out. So, let's take a look at the box that uh, the Revenge Hunter comes in, uh, or the Revenant, as we'll call him from now on, or, or maybe just Hugh Glass. Um, nice box. It's a shoebox design, not too tall. Um, very uh, bold black and white design. It says Revenge Hunter across the front here. There's a picture of the character in silhouette uh, at the bottom, and uh, a couple of photos of, uh, of Leonardo DiCaprio from the film itself. Obviously, not shots of the figure. We've got the, uh, the grizzly down there that, uh, that causes a lot of damage to him. Um, and a very simple DJ custom at the top. Uh, nice solid box, nice, nice quality card. Let's flip it round to the side. Uh, very simple, just plain white. That uh, black and white silhouette of the uh, tree line there continues. DJ custom on the side, uh, around the back, uh, the usual warnings. Uh, nice to see some maintenance um, Instructions here as well. Uh, don't often see those on the back of uh, on the back of these boxes, but yeah, the usual warnings. Uh, don't torn to bear with this box; it might damage you. Uh, round to this side, DJ Customs. That tree line continued. Uh, sides and then the bottom, Revenge Hunter with some uh, bear claw marks there, and I'm assuming that will be the same on the top. Yep, yeah, it is indeed. Very simple, but very bold uh, and very effective. This is literally a brand new figure. It has only just arrived. It's not even out of the box. I've not even had a chance to look at this yet. So uh, this is going to be a, a voyage of discovery for all of us. But um, as always, uh, let's go down onto the table and see what Mr. Glass comes with. Okay, so here we are down on the table with all the accessories that come with your Hugh Glass, the Revenant figure or Revenge Hunter, uh, as he's better known if you don't own the license. Uh, and I have to say, uh, straight out of the box, literally straight out of the box. I was stunned by the amount of accessories here. Uh, opening the box, the first layer had several accessories and then took the, uh, took the first layer of foam off and came across a whole boatload more. Uh, so there's certainly a lot of bang for your buck here with this figure as far as accessories go. Uh, so let's crack on. <laughs> this is gonna take a while. Uh, I will make it as brief and as painless as possible. Let's start with the hands as we always do. Uh, let's just move that out of the way for the time being. Let's start with the hands. Um, two pairs here, a pair on the figure, six hands in total. Let's have a look at the quality that we're looking at here. So, you know, me and my hands. Uh, so, yeah, straight away, all these hands have got bindings on them and they are nicely uh, weathered, dirty looking bindings. Uh, looks like they've been wrapped around the, uh, the hand, uh, quite simply stuck onto the hand. Uh, but yeah, very, very effective. The hands themselves, a um, couple of paint washes on there. Not the best quality paint work I've ever seen, but the sculpting's pretty good. There's some reddening on the knuckles there. Uh, let's go for the, uh, the test of the firmness. Uh, yeah, uh, a sort of a, a medium there, soft to medium, I would say. Uh, so not s pretty good for posing. Uh, perhaps not the, uh, the best hands I've ever seen, not the worst, but yeah, they're effective enough. Uh, and multiple hands here, so what have we got? We've, most of these are gripping hands, because as you can see, there are multiple accessories here. So 
you know, everything from sticks to weapons to uh, to other items as well that we'll cover. So most of these are gripping hands because he's holding something at some point. So yeah, but they're all of the same quality, pretty decent paint work. And uh, as I said, these straps look very effective, although they possibly could do with some more weathering. Uh, but yeah, off to a good start with the hands. So that's the hands. Where next? Let's take a look at this thing. Uh, this is the walking stick st stroke crutch that he uses for quite a lot of the film after the uh, spoiler alert, rather vicious bear attack. This is all plastic, solid, um, not too heavy, but it's uh, it's got a nice, uh, nice solid feel to it. Um, there are some indentations in here that you can feel. Um, the sculpting's quite nice, and then you've got these this washed grey and brown brown grey and brown paint over the top which gives it this uh, sort of old wood effect yeah very good very effective so that's the uh the crutch uh what else have we got let's take a look at this necklace now uh, this is the bear claw necklace that uh, plays a part in the film that we see several times um now yeah if i can get this into the camera here i think what we're looking at here is just brown plastic maybe black plastic doesn't appear to be any paintwork on these. Uh, uh, just, there might be actually. Uh, I don't know whether the light's picking up. There might be a slight wash of brown on top of the, the black plastic. But yeah, pretty effective. And it's got a, uh, uh, a plain brown string. So uh, if you're wanting to display this around his neck, uh, that's an option as well. So that's the uh, necklace. Let's put that to one side. Pause for breath and keep going. <laughs> what else have we got? Um, the water flask, the hip flask turned water flask. Now, once again, this has got a, uh, feels like a cotton string uh, with uh, some kind of, uh, maybe a, a, a slight wash over the top to give it some strength. Uh, very nice. This is actually metal, I believe. It feels like metal. It's cold to the touch. Uh, so yeah, um, nice paint washes on there. Nice, nice paint application to make it look old and weathered. Uh, and the, of, the, the circle there that's etched into the uh, hip flask by one of his uh, one of his colleagues, shall we say? Uh, yeah, nice paintwork, very effective. So uh, that's the flask. What else do we get? Um, there's this pouch. Now I'd have to revisit the film, and I actually, do, which I did actually uh, the, a couple of days ago. Uh, now I'm unsure whether this pouch is for the buckshot, for the powder for or whether uh, i'm not i'm not 100 percent certain but um i think it's possibly the powder actually uh for his rifle but yeah um feels like a cotton material a brush cotton material there is uh there's some foam inside there to give it the shape and what appears to be possibly a pleather strap uh i'm not sure if that's pleather or leather i'll have to double check but yeah uh screen accurate and effective so that's that let's take a look at these weapons next Okay, let's start with the knife. Um, nice work here, all plastic again. Um, there's some nice paint washes on there. There's a black paint wash on there to give it that sort of old look and it's scratched, dirtied up a bit. So yeah, that's very nice. And uh, wooden handle, um, brown paint applications on there to give that wood grain look. Uh, yeah, very effective. Not too sharp either as well, so you're not gonna injure yourself with it. So that's the knife. Uh, let's take a look at the flintlock pistol uh, next. Um, nice sculpt there. Uh, yep, nice paint applications. Relatively straightforward. You just got a, a black and a, and a brown wash on, on there. The brown wash on the stock and the sides of the barrel, the black on the, uh, the barrel and the rest of the, the gun itself. No cocking action here. Uh, but yeah, uh, nice sculpt. Looks very nice. Oh yeah. And yeah, a little silver bit on the hilt there. Uh, yeah, simple but effective. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, the flintlock rifle next. Uh, same story here as with the pistol. Um, some nice uh, paint application on the stock there, give it that wood look. Perhaps, uh, as with the hands, possibly could use a weathering. Um, I mean, th this guy was battered throughout the film but as the film progressed he got more and more battered uh, as did most of the things that he was carrying but yeah uh, nice detailing there on the uh, on the trigger and on the uh, on the stock as I say so yeah overall very effective so that's the the weapons what else do you get 
Yeah, let's take a look at this. This was something that surprised me. I had seen it in promo pictures and I assumed it was plastic and actually it isn't. This is a solid metal Academy Award a statue, an Oscar. Uh, now, um, if memory serves me well, I, th uh, I think that this film garnered three Oscars. I know DiCaprio got Best Actor. I think it got Best Cinematography as well uh, and possibly Best Director. Um, but yeah, that's a nice little touch. Um, is, and it's got it's got some weight to it. It's got some lovely high gloss paint on there, and yeah, nice little addition there. Uh, unexpected. So that's the Academy Award. What else do we get? Okay, yeah. Uh, this is the bearskin hooded poncho that he wears for a lot of the film. Uh, obviously, artificial fur. Uh, as you can see there, it's lined inside. And the, I, what I do like is they've actually put some rough stitching on the areas that might show, um, which is uh, which is they didn't need to do. Uh, but uh, yeah, as you can see there, they've rough stitched that 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 section of it, so it looks. Uh, if that bit does show, uh, which I'm assuming is if you've got his arm raised or something like that, you will actually see uh, uh, that rough stitched area, which is uh, which is a nice touch there by DJ Custom. Um, obviously faux fur, uh, but very, very effective. Uh, uh, a hood stitched in there. Um, this is a, this feels like a faux leather. Oh, it might be real leather actually. I'm not 100% certain. Uh, we'll go with faux for the time being, but if it is faux, it is very, very good. Um, that is effective and I do like that. Once again, uh, I would say possibly uh, need some weathering. Um, uh, it looks a bit too clean, uh, considering the circumstances of uh, of Mr. Glass's time in the wilderness. But yeah, I think weathering is the order is going to be the order of the day on this figure. Uh, so that's the bear skin. Um, these two packets over here, which I haven't opened, and uh, I won't open on camera because they're going to go everywhere, are pretty much twigs and leaves. Um, very strange it might seem, but yeah, I am assuming these are for this rather nice diorama base that we've got over here. Yeah, so you get one packet of twigs, one packet of leaves. Okay, so that's that. And talking of packets, this did put a smile on my face when I was opening the box. Um, uh, I'm not gonna make any jokes, but uh, suffice it to say how this got through customs, I don't know. Uh, my first reactions were uh, amusement, let's say. Uh, now, I am assuming this is snow. <laughs> uh, I'm assuming it's snow to decorate the, uh, uh, the, the display base with and possibly the figure itself. Either that or uh, somebody got my boxes mixed up. So that's your packet of snow. Uh, what else? Well, finally, yeah, let's take a look at this base. Um, now, this is a rather nice display base. Uh, all plastic. Uh, Let's flip it over, there's nothing on the underside here. As I say, this is a brand new figure to me, so uh, this is the first time I've seen all these bits and pieces. Um, so yeah, all plastic. We've got this sort of grass, turf, dirt effect, uh, which is, uh, I believe is some form of material, it's like, almost like artificial turf. We've got a few rocks scattered around here, some stones, they've got some nice paintwork on these stones here, as you can see. Uh, and then you've got obviously hue glass across the front. Uh, yeah, very nice indeed. It's got a decent footprint. This uh, comes with obviously, as always, the obligatory crotch grabber. Uh, so yeah, quite impressed with that base. So there you have it. That's all the accessories that come with your hue glass figure. What we're going to do next, as always, is bring out the figure, get him onto the turntable, and take an up close and personal look at hue glass. The Revenant. Okay, so here he is, the main event himself, Mr. DiCaprio, Mr. Hugh Glass from The Revenant, or The Revenge Hunter. Uh, we've got him onto the turntable, on the stand, and um, let's take a close-up look at uh, the outfit, the head sculpt, uh, and uh, how this guy uh, actually has come out. And uh, first impressions are out of the box are very, very good. Um, this lighting is not doing the head sculpt many favours. Um, I think it will look far superior when we get it over into the deeds office. Something I'm working on, as I mentioned before. But yeah, first impressions are very good indeed. Um, 
Let's start with the uh, with the outfit itself. Let's stop him spinning for a second, and so we can take a closer look at the actual outfit itself. Uh, and it doesn't want to stop spinning. Uh, my turntable has a mind of its own sometimes, so let's bring him round and take a closer look at the uh, at the outfit. Let's bring him a bit closer into the uh, into the camera, so we can. Uh, We'll start at the bottom, as always, and, and work our way up. These uh, the, these feet are rather unusual. Uh, the, the the shoes themselves are a, a material, uh, as opposed to being sculpted plastic. The, the 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 soles of the shoes are sculpted plastic, but the actual bottom part of the boots here is a, a sculpted is, uh, is, is a material, uh, quite a soft material, uh, very pleasant to the touch, and, and very effective actually. Uh, I don't know whether the camera's picking this up. Um, there's some weathering on there. Uh, it's not substantial. Um, as I mentioned before, I think uh, this is going to uh, this is going to take a, a weekend or so of me weathering this to get it to exactly how I want it. But yeah, uh, above the, uh, uh, the the material boots, uh, uh, the tops of these material boots are, are more faux fur. Uh, then we move on to the pants themselves. The pants themselves is sort of. And I believe it's the same material as the jacket. Now, I'm not certain, I don't think these are leather. These trousers are most certainly cotton. Uh, they're quite a thick, heavy, heavy cotton with some weathering on them. Not much in the way of stitching, uh, other than these exterior seams, which are actually screen accurate um, and look very, very effective. Uh, the camera's picking that, that exterior seam up there. There's an interior seam here, but yeah, once again, it's a dark brown uh, cotton with, uh, with some quite effective weathering there not quite as much as i'd like but uh we'll get to that no doubt so yeah let's bring him back round again that's the pants um the coat itself this coat is very very nice indeed it f I'm, I'm certain it's not leather but it feels leather and it has a very effective leather look to it uh very, very nice shade of brown, once again with the weathering on it. And then we've got some really rough stitching going on up here, uh, which looks like where the holes have been stitched up in his coat. And, and that's reflected on this side as well. We've got a, a, a tooth hanging down there, uh, which is stitched into a small piece of cotton hanging on the side there. Underneath this, we've got, uh, we've got a, a shirt, uh, brown. that's brown cotton. Again, slightly different shade. Don't know whether this one does. It, oh yeah, it's Velcro. It's uh, that's all Velcroed up there. Uh, let's see if there's anything underneath there. Uh, looks like there's a, a white vest underneath there. Let's if I can get that all the way up. Yeah, we've got a white vest going on. Or whether that's actually uh, padding for the figure. Yeah, that's actually padding that we've got going on. That's not a white vest. They've obviously padded the uh, the, the figure out itself to make it more to resemble more accurately. Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio's physique in the film. Uh, but yeah, that's a, a nice sort of, it's a high collared shirt, once again with the same weathering replicated there. Uh, weathering down the sleeves. Uh, let's spin him round. Yeah, you can see that's that external stitching is continued there. I don't think that is actually real stitching on, on the arm here. Or it might be actually. Yeah, closer look, yes it is. Very nice work there from uh, DJ Customs. More props to them again. Uh, we've got this uh, faux hood. Uh, let's put that. Let's pull that over. Uh, see how he looks with the uh, the hood over, so we can get a better idea as well of the rest of the jacket. That that stitching's continued down there. More weathering. Yeah, very very nice. Very effective indeed. Uh, and that's uh, that's him with the hood up. Um, we've got uh, what feels like pleather again, which is this 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 bag he has on his side. Let's just see if we can't get that into camera and see if that. Is a working bag, yeah, that's a working bag. Velcro fastening there. Uh, uh, the knife sheath there across the chest. Yeah, there you have it. Uh, and these are the other two hands that we, uh, that we didn't take a look at. These are pretty much neutral hands by the looks of it, the ones that we didn't take a look at when we were down on the table with the accessories. So let's get on to the, the important part. Well, it's all important, but uh, let's take a look at this head sculpt. Now, as, let's, I'll send it back a little bit. Now, as I said, the lighting here is 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 not the best, and it's something that I'm working on, uh, and we'll we'll get a better look when we get him over into the detail. But yeah, that head sculpt is very very good. It's coming off as slightly shiny under these lights, uh, but in hand it isn't. Um, 
uh, there's multiple paint applications there. The sculpt on that beard is nice. There's a reddening to the face. The eyes aren't overly glassy, uh, but there is, uh, they, they do have a glassy look to them. We've got some uh, scarring here over the nose, the bridge of the nose and on the forehead. Uh, the, the, that wet look blood paint's very effective. The lightness to Leonardo DiCaprio, definitely there. A hundred percent? I'm not sure, but I mean, you, you, you can, uh, you can give DJ, DJ Custom some leeway on this one because uh, he was buried under a mountain of bedraggled hair and a beard uh, for most of the film. So, uh, in fact, for all of the film. Um, it's a one head sculpt with this figure, uh, fixed neck. Um, the range of motion is pretty good. I'm liking that. What I really am impressed with, though, is this. This is actually rooted hair. I believe it's rooted hair anyway. Or, or is it a combination of plastic and rooted? I'm just going to have to stand up here and take a look at this. As I say, this is a new figure to me, so bear with me. No, nope, that's all rooted. That's all rooted, but I think what they've done here is they've actually, uh, they've stuck this hair down. Um, so, yeah, they've used rooted hair, but they've actually stuck it to the head sculpt. I and mean, I have to say, it's very effective. Um, you can actually move these the, the sides of this hair here. Let's bring him around to see how it works around the back. Bring him forward a little bit. Uh, yeah, that is all rooted uh, and stuck together, matted together. Uh, very effective indeed. So you can actually, you can do some work with that hair if you want to make him look a little less, uh, a little less neat and tidy. So yeah, very good. I'm liking that. Good work there from DJ Customs. So far, uh, this is getting a thumbs up from me. Uh, I'm liking that a lot. So. That's the outfit, uh, and a brief look at the head sculpt. Let's do as we always do. Let's go over to the Detolf. Let's get him in a pose, get him under the Detolf lights, and see how this guy displays. Okay, so here we are over in the Detolf with Hugh Glass from The Revenant, AKA Mr. Leonardo DiCaprio. So let's take a closer look at how he displays under the Detolf lights. And I have to say from the get-go here, I wanted to display this character with the bearskin uh, poncho on. But unfortunately, herein lies one of the issues with this figure. It's not the best body in the world. Uh, 30 points of articulation, but unfortunately none of them that good. Uh, it's probably the only real niggle I've got with this figure, and it does let it down a little bit, is that they have used quite a cheap body. Um, the rest of it is a different story. Uh, that base is wonderful. Uh, I have yet to uh, introduce the cocaine, the snow, to this display. I will be doing that once I've weathered this figure to my liking. But uh, yeah, the accessories, uh, the outfit is absolutely spot on. Uh, there's some wonderful work on that outfit. The tailoring is great, very screen accurate. Uh, the accessories, top notch. Uh, and let's take a closer look at that head sculpt. Uh, now, under these Detolf lights, I think you can really get an idea of how good that head sculpt actually is. Uh, the, the paint applications, the, uh, the dirt washes, uh, the glassiness of the eyes, the lightness of, De of Leonardo DiCaprio is very, very good indeed. Uh, and I really, really do like, and I, I never thought I'd hear myself say this, but I really do like that hair. I am not the world's biggest fan of rooted hair, as uh, viewers of my reviews will uh, probably have already gathered, but for some reason this works, whether it's the fact that it's it's been stuck down in places or whether it's uh, it, it's what they've actually put in the hair to give it that uh, uh, to, to, to give it that flat sort of consistency, but it does move. There's movement in there if you want to pose it, uh, move it around, mess it up a little bit. Uh, yeah, it, uh, it works. So rooted hair that works for me, there's a first. But yeah, um, overall, uh, the, the shelf presence is, is phenomenal. Uh, the head sculpt is very good indeed. I wouldn't give it a 10 out of 10, but it's still very, very good. Uh, and everything else about this figure is exceptional. Really, really good. And really, really captures the, uh, the likeness of Leonardo DiCaprio and, and the essence uh, of the rather fantastic film, which you, if you haven't seen, you should seek out. Uh, the rather marvelous film, The Revenant. So there you have it. That is uh, The Revenge Hunter by DJ Customs, AKA 
uh, Nick Glass, uh, Nick Glass, Hugh Glass even, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio from The Revenant. I hope you've liked this video. If you have, please hit the thumbs up button. Uh, comment in the comment section below. Uh, hit the subscribe button, the bell notification icon. We have plenty more content coming up. Uh, what's next on the channel? Um, Hot Toys, John Matrix, long awaited. Uh, a brand new old figure that we'll be unboxing and reviewing in the uh, not too distant future. So all that remains for me to say is it's goodbye uh, from me, goodbye from Hugh Glass, uh, and uh, take care of yourselves and happy collecting.